teachers for, for professional development through all of his networking uh, building. Uh, he currently serves as senior vice president for NELTA. And um, my personal relationship with Locksman began with a rather innocuous Facebook post by a mutual <laughs> friend who had just yeah. bought the book. Uh, Locksman commented that this, these types of books are, are difficult to get in Nepal. Uh, I got it here in Japan and I brought it to him at the NELTA conference in Kathmandu. Uh, this was what, several years ago but it was through this brief encounter that I was able to take a study leave uh, and work with Loxman and his students at Kathmandu University um, for six months last year. So the moral of the story is that you just never know who you might meet anywhere, anytime, however briefly, that might result in professional collaboration and community building. And I believe he will address this in his talk today. So please join me in welcoming Professor Laxman Yawali. Go Laxman. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Anne. Uh, thank you so much uh, for having me here. And thank you for the support uh, that I am uh, Bill Balsamo um, uh, is in a scholar. And um, with that uh, honor, I, I share my um, research, uh, you know, outcomes on teacher associations there. My title for my presentation is Reciprocity uh, and Growth in Communities of Practice, um, whereby I, I consider um, uh, um, NELTA, ZALT, or any other teacher association as uh, communities of practice and um, how they function, what the members get and do in those um, associations, in those communities, that will be my uh, uh, main focus of the presentation here. Um, now, um, my, my, my first question here is uh, this. So um, whoever is here, could you, could you, um, uh, could you uh, type your answer to this question? What constitutes power for you? I mean, for you, where does power lie? Um, what does power mean you? Um, mean for you? So, can you just uh, write uh, your answer? I mean, what do you think uh, uh, is power for you? Uh, in, in chat box, maybe if you, if you could uh, type, or because we are not many, we could simply. Uh, uh, shout out, that's okay. Um, yes. Um, uh, okay, what kind of influence one has through connections? Yes, yes, okay. Um, all right, any other? All right. Um, now, let me go ahead. I begin my uh, sharing here. Okay, there's some, okay, self-respect. Yes, Yossi Sato. Yes, okay, thank you. Um, uh, here, I begin with some uh, Hindu wisdom here. Uh, here, you can see this image where um, some power of some, you know, physical or symbolic power um, is, is symbolized by these uh, joined hands. Uh, and you can see here this uh, Nepali um, script, but it's not this Nepali. We call um, it Devnagari, uh, which is shared by uh, over 30 languages across South Asia. Um, it, it reads, Sangye Sakti Kalo Yuge. Um, the organization holds the key to strength in modern times. So I asked you, what uh, I mean, what constitutes power or strength? So here, um, our Hindu wisdom says power lies, strength lies in an organization, in organizational uh, situations there. So, uh, so um, uh, who said this? Or in what context? Our Hindu scriptures, many of them say that in Kali Yuga, that is modern time, power lies not in individual, but in but in organizations. Then what is Kali Yuga? Let me just give you a little background here. Um, in, in Hindu um, scriptures, Hindu wisdom, uh, the, the creation repeats itself. You know, there are times when creation starts and the creation, uh, you know, um, um, uh, you know, sort of, you know, goes into nothingness and then it starts over again. 
And for this, the, for one cycle of creation, there are four ages, the yuga, they, they're called yuga in Sanskrit. Uh, so Satya Yuga, Treta Yuga, Dwapar Yuga, and Kali Yuga. And the longest one is Satya. That is started, you know, this BCE, um, uh, three million above um, years ago, and then ended there. And then, so now we are in the Kali Yuga, and it is started 3,000, one and two years ago, uh, before I mean, before uh, this uh, Gregorian calendar started, before Christ, and then um, now it's it's about five thousand years now. But the life of uh, Kali Yuga is for th four hundred thirty two thousand years. So now uh, they say that power in Satya Yuga lay in you know truthfulness, and then Treta Yuga in respect, and then connections there in the society. And then Dwapar Yuga in uh, mostly in politics and uh, you know uh, also support to others and then following dharma that is righteousness and Kali Yuga these powers not uh, hold all the time uh, for us so they I uh, mean the power will be with us if we are in an organization so that is what Kali Yuga our Hindu wisdom said. The context I'm talking about is uh, this um, you know. These days, uh, you go to any uh, profession, uh, and then let's come to uh, teachers' professions there. Um, so uh, anywhere we see a language, I mean, a teacher associations functioning, and uh, uh, English language teacher associations are, I think, are in bigger in number than other associations there. Um, so um, it, it's a very common phenomenon, um, and. Uh, um, they they might be formal or informal uh, entities in um, you know uh, any country uh, or any part of the world, and uh, uh, so initially there are some records that uh, some started earlier, but the more formal teacher associations started uh, from 1960s mainly with these uh, Tissol and uh, ITFL, um you know organizations there, and uh, almost all of them. Uh, run in voluntarism model. They, 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 they're not paid um, people, but you know they run with the office bearers who work as volunteers there. Um, you can see uh, there are um, very many. There's just a few here. Uh, Zalt is standing very tall here. Um, you know, um, and we have Usti from Uzbekistan, Korean Tisol, Aitafel. Uh, the UK based and Tisol, the US based and Selta, Sri Lanka, Spelt, Pakistan, Belt, Belt Bangladesh, Nelta, Nepal, Fotel, Eltai, both India and Asia Tefal that covers Asian uh, teacher associations there. Um, you know, uh, so so now this this is the scenario. Everywhere, every country you go, you know, there are teacher associations, and as I said earlier, and English language teacher associations, uh, you know, are bigger in number. Uh, for a number of reasons. Um, now, do we need so many teacher associations? Why do we need them? What is the rationale of you know spending money and resource and efforts, you know, and time on teacher associations? There have been several writings and presentations on why we need teacher associations. Dick Wright gave a talk in uh, Cuba, Havana in 1991. And Zakia Sharwad gave another talk in Nepal in 1994. And later, Padward and Dixit from India, uh, they, they, they wrote in 2008 why we need them. And they, they talked about these uh, clubs. So th those are local uh, uh, and also, you know, um, they also justified why we need national, you know, teacher associations. And Kolsantin Kova in 2011 wrote a big research you know, report um, uh, saying that teachers can you know, help each other um, if, if they come into teacher associations. And Farrell Singh and Giri uh, edited um, uh, a book uh, in South Asia in 2011, which has you know, a few chapters on teacher associations. And lately, uh, you know, Elsa Kum and F. Young, they, they uh, um, edited another book in 2018, and uh, you know they have further gone uh, how teacher associations are making an impact on teachers' lives and further. Um, you know there has been a lot of literature. Um, 
um, including how to set up teacher associations, how to run them, how to sustain them. So this is one uh, that was developed by the British Council and IETFL jointly that, that came in 2006, uh, and then it has been um, there. Um, uh, and it was edited by Susan Gomez, she's also one of the teacher association, you know, um, a professional member there. Um, and so, so you can see that uh, professionals or academicians are, you know, justifying why, why we need them. There have been how to publications and teacher association and their management and all. And there are other initiatives and, and research undertakings that are coming. You know, in 2008, seven and eight, British Council ran, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, project um, titled Strengthening Teacher Association Project. What they did was they trained teacher association leaders um, on, you know, how to set up, how to manage, how to sustain, how to expand, consolidate teacher associations. Uh, and they focused this in South uh, Asia and South um, East Asia and Central uh, Asia. They did this. So you can see why an international mission like British Council, you know, spends money on helping teacher associations. There must be some reason. And the reason, as I already said, is because uh, they need to stay and sustain themselves. And uh, Anna Falcao uh, did a master's research in 2004. Um, she, uh, she compared um, uh, spelt Pakistan and Zalt uh, Japan um, in, in their you know, uh, management and leadership activities, like a Brazilian teacher association for teachers of English too, and international and comparative educational perspective. So she took um, um, and, and Zalt and, and um, Pakistan, um, you know, um, spelt, and, and then she compared them. So this was one first, I think, um, uh, academic initiative about teacher association. And Alcantara um, has a very symbolic, you know, very metaphorical, um, you know, title in her research here, a lonely rooster cannot bring on a new dawn. So many roosters must crow, then only the dawn will uh, come. So then, um, you know, one person shouting doesn't help, but if teacher associations come together, uh, you know, uh, to, to, to herald a beginning of, you know, teacher association and its impact on teacher development, it will make a difference. So that's what she, she researched on. And Arega uh, uh, from Ethiopia, he um, did a master's research in 2012, and uh, uh, his, his title was like something like, you know, impact on professional development of EFL teachers and their discourses. And followed, um, uh, I mean, it, it, they were all followed by my uh, PhD research in 2013, in which I, I um, uh, wrote a thesis um, on English language teacher development through professional associations, the NELTA way. So I took NELTA as a case, and then, you know, I, um, uh, I um, you know, explored a lot of things there, what NELTA has done. Um, and uh, in 2018, um, the, there's another article here by Kutsa and Richard Smith um, titled An Invitation to Teacher Association Research. So now more, there's more um, you know, attention to research into teacher associations and by teacher associations. So we can see how we can uh, capitalize what has um, been built um, uh, with and through teacher associations there. Um, here you can see, uh, this is uh, Nelta uh, Central Office. This is a building in Kathmandu. Very few teacher associations across the world have their own office buildings, office space, very few of them. Most of them either are using, you know, uh, office spaces that were, um, you know, just voluntarily given by schools or colleges or some other organizations, or they have hired them. But NELTA has, NELTA is one of those few teacher associations that has its own office building. 
How was it possible? Where did the money come from? So that is something that we will deliver it um, uh, later. Now, uh, NELTA was established in 1992 with 12 members in a small room of British Council. You know, they, they met there and they, they set this up. But now we have uh, 55 branches and 5,000 plus life members there. It's a huge organization in Nepal. And uh, it's international uh, conferences that are attended in a physical setting by 1,000 professionals. So that's, uh, that's a huge number to manage um, with the resources and facilities that we have here. And we are supported um, you know, by national and international partners and collaborators. You know, every time we do, there's a lot of you know, competition in supporting us. So NELTA has um, gained reputation there. Um, now, so what's the problem now? What is my issue here is teacher development, one issue, teacher professional development, teacher associations and their existence second, then there is a gap. So uh, uh, Steve Mann writes that it's considered healthy for teacher, teachers to uh, proactively be involved in their own development process. So teachers need to develop on their own or uh, at least they need to seek um, you know, opportunities um, and to, to, to meet the challenges, to tackle the challenges on their own. And uh, teacher associations perhaps could be a place where teachers can uh, undertake their own development process there. And um, um, so the literature writes like language teacher association offer perhaps the best benefits EFL teachers can have, um, um, you know, apart from other opportunities there. Um, and uh, there is more, uh, as I presented earlier, um, growing attention and initiatives in the language teacher association sector. So more associations coming, you know, every country, virtually every country has got at least one teacher association. That means there must be 200 plus, but there are many in some countries. So there, there are hundreds of others there. However, relationship between language teacher associations and its members or their members, uh, professional growth not well explored. At least that is what I saw when I did my first round of research. Today, I'm, I'm setting to two rounds of research here. Um, so what were my questions? My questions were, um, because I took NELTA as a case, so uh, my, my questions were, how does NELTA contribute to the professional development of English language teachers? And how does NELTA benefit from its member teachers? So how do members of NELTA benefit from it? And how does NELTA benefit from its members? So this, this two-way relationship, I wanted to see. But before I did that, I tried to you know, um, see the theoretical intent. Uh, I mean, what's the theoretical basis of these teacher associations and all. And here I have two, two theories here. One is communities of practice. So, um, you know, Etienne Wenger is uh, a key figure in um, this uh, communities of practice, you know, um, um, uh, theory here. Uh, what uh, he and uh, co-writers say that uh, is that communities of practice are groups of people who share a concern or a passion for something they do and learn how to do it better if they interact regularly. So, groups of people come together because they share some passion, some concern, and they do, they undertake things together, learn how to do it better, and they interact more, and they learn more. So this is a community. This is sort of a family, you know? So this is what um, uh, uh, COP uh, for short has been defined as. So then teacher associations as a COP, communities of practice, they give a sense of belongingness to the te uh, teachers who come to them as members there. And they give them identity. They give them a tag, a, 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 you know, a number, a name, a membership card, you know. Uh, so the, they are listed in the um, journals and websites and all, you know. So through this community domain practice nexus, as, as Wenger um, et al., you know, right, so teacher associations offer a big you know, opportunity for teachers to grow there. 
And uh, Baber, Eric Baber in 2012 wrote, teaching, training, lecturing, research, writing, they don't come uh, you know, on their own, they take place with, uh, they don't take place with just individual teachers. If I'm here alone, I wouldn't be talking to ZALT members there. They are the results of social interactions and exchanges. We exchange, we interact, and then we share. Then we, uh, we, we not only make uh, use of opportunities we get, but also create opportunities for others. So this was one theory I tried to see. And next is teacher associations are the you know, community practice, yes, but there we see a capital. It's not a financial capital. It's not a physical capital. It is a social capital. So what's social capital then? Social capital is a capital which, which does not lie in physical sense, but uh, it is, it is uh, you know, a sort of you know, social, um, uh, social uh, realization of what we have, a kind of strength we build. Hanifan in 1916, not now, 1916 uh, wrote, the individual is helpless socially. If left himself, if I'm alone, I'm helpless, I can't do much. If he comes into contact with his neighbor, at that time, neighbors were more important. Now we have left our neighbors back. We are in a different neighborhood. And they with other neighbors, there will be an accumulation of social capital which may immediately satisfy his social needs. So the social needs, social sort of you know, interaction, the social sort of, you know, this, this uh, uh, power we, we, we create was considered as social capital um, by Hanifan in, 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 in 1916. But later others came like Bourzou. Um, what he, um, he said is the sum total of the actual or potential resources of a durable network of relationships of members which are institutionalized. So, there are members and they're in an institution, an organization. Then what they create is through their network, they create actual or potential resources they build and the sum total of those resources is social capital. So then, so social capital is more potential resource we have, but the potential becomes actual when we come together. Um, and in 2008, Field writes, it involves the expectation of reciprocity. I mean, so in social capital, what happens is if I give, I also gain. I may expect, I may not expect, I also gain. So reciprocal, give and take. And it goes beyond any given individual to involve wider networks whose relationships are governed by a deg high degree of trust and shared values. So where does social capital build it when members come together with the shared values and trust? I mean, if I come to you, I come with a trust that I can share, I'll be listened to, and I can gain from you, I'll be listening to you. That is what I come with. Then we build social capital. So with these two, two theories, I designed um, research. Site, as such, there is no physical site. Um, this NELTA, Nepal English Language Teachers Association, as um, my um, you know, uh, research site, virtual site, let us say. Um, initially, um, in my first phase of research, I had 10 NELTA members, and they were in the central committee leadership positions. Uh, I um, analyzed uh, documents of NELTA, NELTA statute, the, the constitution, let's say, and uh, narratives and interviews um, I took with these um, uh, participants. Then uh, I uh, transcribed and then I analyzed and came down with uh, three themes here. Um, so the first theme is, was the contribution of teacher association to, to its members? Second, uh, I mean, the, these two, um, uh, two themes, you know, uh, uh, were pre-mediated from my research question. So second is uh, contributions of the members of the teacher association. Um, and uh, then um, as, as I analyzed the data, then what I saw is there is reciprocity. So I added this new theme, the theme that emerged is the focus on the association member reciprocity. So with the three themes, I analyzed my, um, um, my data. 
then um, let me begin with the first thing. So one of the what is the contribution of teacher association in case in this case NELTA to the members that have come to it? Um, the first thing that NELTA profile website and its documents um, uh, write this sentence here. So this is the intent. This is the policy. I quote, I quote it in 2014, but it remains um, just like this now. To provide a forum for teachers of English for exchange of ideas and experience at regional, national, and international levels, and to provide trainings and other professional development services to ELT professionals. So this is what was intended and is intended by NELTA for its members. So you can see here, NELTA intends to promote, to, to empower its members through different initiatives at different levels. So this is what is written. Then what is the um, experience of, you know, what are the experiences of members there? Is they say that NELTA contributes to their professional growth. Um, this is a, a pseudonym. So Gaurav says, if English teachers want to disseminate their success stories, NELTA is the platform. If you have something to share, you share. Sharing is also growing. So here, it's a platform. That's what Gaurav says. And uh, um, Kanak says, in 1996, he, he um, joined uh, NELTA. And then uh, it was a... Uh, um, it was an international conference. For him, it was a big turning point. That's what he claims. And in his narratives, he writes that after that, his growth started. He had better network. He was a better teacher and all that. Uh, then another uh, participant says, these opportunities not only developed my network, but also a range of my skills such as communication, presentation, networking, and so on. So because NELTA brought opportunities, it expanded his network. But it's not, it not just knowing people and being friends with them, expanding the network, but also personally developing the skills of communication, presentation, networking, as, as I said earlier, and other skills. So their, I mean, NELTA members, you know, professional growth took place because of NELTA's existence. Another, um, you know, uh, indic um, and point indicated earlier as well is participants saw that their international links, you know, um, uh, links grew because they came to international conferences, they read international journals, you know, they read many things, they read many things. Like NELTA creates opportunities for members to participate locally, internationally, regionally to strengthen their capacity. So this, this, uh, this um, allowing them to link is to giving them, you know, um, opportunity for, you know, strengthening what capacity that they have. And motivation is the biggest thing actually. Because when you're motivated, you know, skills will develop just on its own. Uh, Amar is very, very motivated because he came to NELTA. And the token of, you know, motivation is not a big thing. Let's see. The participation in the conference energized me professionally. Why? Because I felt proud being a, an English teacher. I had collected a good bag. See, a bag here is symbolic. A name tag that it was uh, given uh, at the conference, a certificate and many photographs of the conference to show and to talk to my colleagues back at the school. So you can see that, I mean, he doesn't mention I learned, but he says, um, energized. I got a bag, name tag, certificate, photograph, but he was, motivated and motivation is what I, what matters most so these were just a few i mean um, um 
I have lots of stories there, but um, I couldn't uh, share all of them. Uh, so this was what Nelta gave them. But what did what did what did Nelta members give uh, to Nelta? Then the first thing they gave is they organized activities. They gave time and energy voluntarily. So Amos says, I've given my energy and time. Because uh, Nelta is this, you know, uh, just a platform. And it's the members who make Nelta a physical, you know, sense, physical reality. So, um, and I've given my time, sometimes my money, Ritika, another, another member says. So this is given not just time, but also money, money and other, other materials there. Uh, yes, and here I would like to refer to that building. That building was built by um, the money, with the money, uh, not, not built, but purchased with the money that Nelta members gave, partners gave, you know, uh, and then, you know, other collaborators gave. Um, so they're very proud with that. And then say that the most irritating thing to my family members is that sometimes I have no time to them, even on holidays. So you can see how then suppose Nelta here is very, very clear because on Saturdays, on holidays, he's not home. He's in Nelta office. He's doing something for Nelta. So this kind of, you know, um, selfless voluntary service to Nelta is something that Nelta gets um, as, a, as a community practice or as, a, as an association. And, uh, and I feel that Nelta is lucky to have members like that. And they not only um, um, you know, uh, do the activities there to, to promote it, but they promote outside. So Gaurav says, because of my connection, because the Nelta members have, they, they don't work at Nelta. They, they support Nelta, but their um, the real career job is somewhere else. So, and then he, uh, they have connections outside. So he says, because of my connection with the different international organizations, we were able to call very renowned speakers to the conferences. So how do we invite speakers from outside, trainers from outside is because our connection. So Nelta members use the connection to promote Nelta. Just one, one you know, um, example here. And another is here. I went to Ireland to present a paper on my own. But when I presented, I said I represented Nelta. I mean, he went to Ireland, not sponsored by Nelta, not sent by Nelta, not connected by Nelta. He went from another forum on his own. But there he presented as he was representing Nelta because he, 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 he took it as his responsibility. After the presentation, participants wanted to have more information about Nelta. They said that they would like to meet Nelta. So then he said that later, some people came to Nelta to present here. So this is how they, they promote. Everywhere they go, the tag of Nelta member, they, they uh, always carry with them. And as I said earlier, setting of NELTA, running NELTA, managing NELTA is not the end of it. We need to consolidate. We need to you know, sustain this. So then Himal says, we planned for NELTA for the future. Ogoro says, we started the strategic planning meeting right after a few new committee uh, was formed every two years from 2008 onwards. I was very active to make that happen. So developing strategic planning, and following that plan is the best way to consolidate an organization. And who is doing this? It's not paid professionals. It's not outside people. It's not the government, but it is the voluntary members of NELTA. And so what is happening? If NELTA members are supporting NELTA, if NELTA is supporting um, you know, its members, then what is happening is they are growing together. They're growing together. So there is association member reciprocity. 
If members serve NELTA honestly, they get opportunities from participating in workshops to higher education like MIT Seoul. But if you just get the membership and wait for the opportunities, it then might be like that. You're not getting anything from it. That is really, um, you know, um, down to earth. Uh, there are opportunities, training to uh, degree programs, but if you just take membership and wait, nothing will happen. You have to contribute. NELTA gives you space if you want. You create that space by offering something to its professional, professional development activities. So you get, uh, you get you know, um, space, but you need to use that space to support yourself and to support the organization. And so here, she says, NELTA creates opportunities for us to develop our training skills and later we train teachers on behalf of NELTA. First, we get the training, fine, we are trained, and then we go and train others. So we take and give, or give and take. I never expected, Amar says, that I could publish an article in an international peer-reviewed journal. What I learned at the master's level was completely theoretical. When I, um, when I um, regularly attended NELTA programs, I could see that a kind of change was happening in my uh, classroom every day. Um, so, um, um, so yes, so this is what is, um, you know, what, what is the feeling of, you know, um, uh, NELTA members there about reciprocity. Uh, then, I felt that I had interviewed the central committee members who are in Kathmandu mostly, and then they have better access, more connection, more exposure. Does it happen in the lower level of the bodies of NELTA? So this time I decided that let me go one step down and then talk to provincial members there. And let us see what the provincial members say. That's what, that's what I thought. And uh, so I took NELTA again at the site, and then I interviewed seven NELTA members in the leadership position in the provincial committees uh, because they are less, they have less chances of availing themselves of the opportunities than compared to you know the central committee members. Um, and this time I just interviewed them because I need to um, just um, see uh, does it hold the same in this level. Then um, I use the same themes, and uh, this is what I found out. Um, these provincial members said they changed their outlook due to the opportunities they get they got from this organization. So they have same language or similar language that they're using. Like Mr. Z says, lots of opportunities to enhance professionalism, training, workshops, seminars, and other networking opportunities exposure visits, scholarships too. I gained social respect and was a, a recognized figure because I belong to NELTA. So this kind of motivation, this kind of feeling of feeling of you know belongingness to this teacher association and, and then feeling socially respected apart from all these opportunities to develop professional skills. So he says the same thing here. And Mr. B says this umbrella, so for him, NELTA is an umbrella that saves him in rain and shine, both. So creates a sense of belongings. I, um, we develop our professional development from um, uh, both local and global expertise. So because you learn from local um, expertise and also because you get exposure to international experts there, then you also get um, development opportunities uh, from local uh, global expertise as well. Um, and they said benefits um, for the members possible due to the provisions made in the policy. So they, they believe that, um, uh, you know, NELTA has a policy to support members and they also take initiatives. So they're happy with that. But they had some reservations there. This reservation was in the central committee as well. However, the spirit of the association not materialized for all members, all, because there are 5,000 plus members and opportunities are not 5,000 in number, they are limited. So then 
the selected members get the opportunities. Then another thing, so do these provincial members contribute to NELTA, uh, you know, associate, as an association? They said similar words, volunteerism was the main thing that they were focusing on. The main contribution is volunteerism. They, they give time, they give energy, sometimes they also give money. Members give time and organize activities for no immediate return. I mean, they, they, they use holidays, they sometimes take leave from their job. Why? There's not immediate return, the return comes later. As the chair of my province, I try to get more life members. We conducted events at local schools for which NELTA has been established as a renowned organization. So he's happy that he was able to get more members for NELTA there. Uh, and another, this Mr. R, uh, who campaigned to, con re so to, to construct a, an office building for his committee successfully, he says, we also contribute monetarily for the for conducting events and raising money for large projects like acquiring buildings. So they, uh, he, he, he goes a little further. It's not simply, you know, um, you know, helping and running training and all, but also, you know, acquiring buildings, raising money for that. But Mr. N says not all members make similar contributions, either because of their own limitations or their attitudes. So not everybody, so we can see that not all members get a benefit and not all members will contribute. So there are some limitations there. However, we have some solid conclusions here. Delta as a, as a um, community of practice creates opportunities for professional growth, motivation and networking there. So participants tend to benefit from, from them and tend to you know, promote all of this. And members support NELTA by volunteering uh, act in the activities, organizing events, and also expanding its networks. And uh, the reality is those members who contribute NELTA tend to enjoy more of such opportunities. So this is, this is very tricky. The members who give time, who volunteer, get the benefit. And the more they, they volunteer and uh, contribute to NELTA, they get more opportunities. So here, it's, it's a sort of cyclical give and take. So give and take, and you give more, you take more. So this is what happens with NELTA. So it is a reciprocal relationship with NELTA and members. The more they give, the more they get, and vice versa. Reciprocity seems to work when members stay with and work for NELTA for a sustained period of time and build a social capital. And here, if a member stays for long, then he or she creates more opportunities and enjoys uh, benefits there. And if they just quickly come and go, then the benefits on either side is, is limited. And this limit, the, the, the uh, limitation of NELTA seems to be here, the disproportionate number of members and the opportunities available. I mean, as I said, 5,000 plus life members and there are other thousands of you know, uh, annual members there. Now, um, so their number is huge and, uh, um, and uh, you know, opportunities that it can create or they can create is uh, few. Uh, or less. So there is a perennial issue because members will increase and opportunity will increase, but in a slower pace, not in that big number. So this community practice is, uh, you know, uh, growing and uh, helping members grow uh, as the years pass by, building more and more social capital. So with this, this is uh, my um, presentation here. So stay healthy, stay safe. Um, but I would like to first thank Bill Balsamo, uh, sorry, um, uh, who, whose, whose contributions now ended, uh, I mean, um, up with me, uh, you know, being uh, as, in, as in a scholar. Um, sorry, what happened? Oh, okay. Um, uh, in, in ZALT Conference 2020, and thank you, ZALT, for having me as a scholar and uh, giving me this opportunity. And thank you, Wayne, thank you, and everyone who helped me. But now, I would like to um, respond if there are any questions there. 
uh, or any queries, I'm happy to um, respond. Or you can you can share your um, you know yes. your, your your experience. Last one. Do you think you can stop sharing your screen and then we can uh, answer your question? Uh, yes. 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 Thank you. Um, just a minute. Where do I? Okay. Here. Um, yes. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, one more time. Thank you very much, Laxman, for that great presentation. Uh, I think it's very poignant, actually, that we're at a conference, uh, an association conference, and um, your your presentation is quite poignant at the moment. Um, in the chat room, actually, there was this one question here. Uh, Dear sir, my curiosity, one, what were the driving forces of motivation for voluntary contribution to NELTA? Mm -hmm. And then okay. there's a second part to that. In the reciprocal exchange and community of practice, did you notice any conflicting experiences, relationship between the association and its member participants, a gap between expectation and reality, for example? Okay, thank you. Um, I think the second question has been partly answered. Um, and there, there, are, there are gaps. Not every member, you know, um, gets opportunity because, firstly, because um, they, um, um, uh, the, the number of opportunities that NELTA has and uh, the uh, um, number of members that we have is not physically possible. So that is, that is one reality. Uh, but the other reality is uh, that uh, many members feel that they, when they become life member, uh, they feel that they need to be called, they need to be invited, they need to be chosen. But this is a voluntary organization. Then what happens here is and these, um, uh, the, uh, those members who come forward and volunteer, um, you know, uh, fall under our eyes and the leader's eyes, and then uh, they, they, they tend to get opportunities there. So showing your uh, I mean, um, existence, let us say, um, I think would be uh, would be one way of doing it. But what what the the members do is um, they wait and watch, and things don't come, and they complain, and and leaders complain they don't get en enough uh, support from their members there. So there are some gaps. I agree, Gunajit, there. And then first question is, what were the driving forces? Um, so here, uh, the NELTA, I mean, my data did not touch upon this, but from my, um, from my uh, experience, personal experience and elsewhere is, it is the mentoring of the, um, of the uh, initial leaders who showed their path. They, they sort of role, they uh, present themselves as a role model of you know, volunteering and then growing. So the incoming members felt that they did this, but um, another reality is that not every member perhaps is as motivated as as everybody else. So so I think role model is is one way of doing uh, seeing this. I don't know um, if I answered your question there. Uh, I mean I, I was adding my own uh, yes. How often uh, yes? How often do members meet once a month? Okay. Uh, here, members here, meeting happens only in the committees, uh, like central committee meets when required and also uh, at certain intervals there. Uh, sometimes we meet once a week, sometimes twice a week, and sometimes once a month maybe, it depends upon, uh, in earlier we used to meet uh, every, um, every week, but later because it was so big, then we started you know, meeting when, when needed because we had to sometimes no work and sometimes too much work. Uh, and then, and then, um, uh, yes, um, and, uh, but uh, we have, we invite all the life members or other members um, to our conferences, but not everybody makes it, about 1,000 come and we have 5,000 plus, as I said. <clears throat> and then, yes, thank you. And then, um, yes, isn't it like like-mindedness and self-orientation that are driving forces? Yes, maybe, yes, people with the same wavelength same passion. Yes, I, I think I presented the shared vision, shared, shared promises, shared passions, bring them together. Yes, you're right. Thank you. Um, and then, uh, yes. And uh, uh, Yoshi, so you have um, asked how many communities are there? Okay. Uh, if, if you take NELTA as one community, then we just have one uh, for English language teachers. 
Um, but English teachers have three uh, communities there. One is literature based, that is a literary association of Nepal. And the other one is uh, LSN, that is a linguistic society of Nepal. And the, this one is uh, Nepal English Language Teacher Association. Association. So if you look at Language Teacher Association, then th this is just one, but it has 35 branches across the country uh, in the local level. And then in the provincial level, each province has a provincial committee. So seven, so we have three tier, um, the, the um, central, provincial, and then local committees. Okay, uh, thank you. Anything else? Well, that's very interesting. Yes, if anyone ever has any other questions, please feel free to uh, unmute yourself because uh, there's a few yes, of us here. Yes. So feel free to unmute yourself and just ask. It's okay. You can raise your hand and I can uh, call on you or something. Okay. Um, maybe uh, because we have uh, Yoshi Sato here uh, asking questions. Uh, do you belong to a teacher association like this? You can unmute or you can write. <laughs> Yoshi, yes. Yes, yes. I, oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. I started, uh, you know, teacher association in Nawea area ah, uh, okay. about 20 years ago. Oh, okay. Great. Mm, 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. mm, and then uh, every month, uh, you know, I organize a, a workshop inviting, uh, you know, professors in Southern uh -huh. area. Uh -huh. Okay. Mm. So <laughs> every month. Then mm -hmm. also uh, those who are interested in uh, doing actual research, you know? Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. So they get together. Your teachers are busy. So after the uh, uh, workshop, some uh, teachers will leave. But uh -huh. those who are interested in actual research, okay, uh -huh. they stay and then they uh, uh, give a report. So they continue the actual research for one year. Okay, great. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, including me, there are uh, three advisors from my university. All right, great. Mm. Uh, we, we are now, uh, we are now um, uh, running exploratory action research. Uh -huh. um, we did one round last year and we are starting another round here. Maybe uh -huh. we will uh, uh, we'll communicate with you so we can share. Uh, as you. I said, now we, we become uh, other community of practice across the, <laughs> across you. you said that. Mm. So thank you. If you can send me your um, email address, then I can, I can um, come I back will. to you. Yeah, or yes, maybe uh, yes. Laxman, maybe in the chat, you can put your email address where people can contact you as well. Uh, okay, yes, yeah, sorry. Um, I think I have it here. Uh, yes, um, yes, um, it's just a minute. Uh, okay. Yes, yes, actually. Thank you so much, Laxman, sir, for your wonderful presentation. So mm -hmm. uh, my name is Pramila. Uh, yes, from name, maybe you can already recognize I'm, I'm from Nepal. I mm -hmm. mean, uh, but I'm, I'm in Japan. I live in Japan and I've been, uh, I mean, I, I teach here as a, as a faculty member in one of the universities. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, I knew about you, of course, Def, because you are a prominent figure in the field in Nepal. I used mm -hmm. to listen to your interview in, in Radio Kantipur. So, mm -hmm. uh, so it, it is a wonderful opportunity for me to listen to you. And thank, thank you. you so thank you so much for giving a lot of details about what NELTA, NELTA is and uh, like how like NELTA members and NELTA can benefit from each others. Uh, I'm from Nepal, but I have never been a NELTA member. I was just thinking of becoming a member. Mm -hmm. uh, every year I used to, last year I think, so there was, a, uh, one one uh, Nelta member representing uh, Nepal to to JALT conference. I met him the bef la the year before last. Also, also he was there. Okay. And uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, okay. I have met him, and I was looking forward to listen to your presentation. I didn't have particular question. I just wanted to thank you so much. Okay, thank, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, actually, this uh, we're, okay, thank you. So sorry, so sorry to uh, interrupt you. Thank you so much, uh, Pramila. You have a fan there, Laxman. You have a, uh, <laughs> yeah. you have a big fan there. <laughs> thank you. If we were, if we were, you. if we were alive, she'd want your autograph, maybe. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But if, if okay. we were doing this face to face. Um, so yeah. sorry to interrupt, but we are at our time now, and uh, there may okay. be next, another you. session coming in here. So 
Um, but we can continue this conversation uh, in the part of the uh, conferences. We have some hangout rooms. So if you go to the live um, in the in the Eventzilla website there, if you go to the live sessions, you'll see a hangouts room uh, and you can actually, as it just says, you can hang out and you can continue this conversation. If you want to do that, Laxman, you can go over there and uh, if you want to talk, anybody wants to talk, maybe Yoshi, you want to talk more, or Pramila, you want to talk more, you can go to the Hangouts room uh, in the Eventzilla, um, mm -hmm. the JAW 2020 okay. Eventzilla space. Okay, thank uh, you. And then after that, uh, I just want to say that a uh, few other things I just have to say before we go. Yeah, uh, thank you so much once again, Laxman, and uh, let's give him one more round of applause. Thank you. Thank that was you. A very good talk. It was very good. Excellent. Thank, um, thank you. And uh, if anyone also is around and you have some other things and you don't have anything else to do, please visit our sponsors. Those are the uh, material makers uh, in our exhibition, in our education ex uh, materials exhibition, the EME. Um, you can get to that by any link that says uh, sponsors or um, you can see them on the live schedule as well. So, and also check out the SIG rooms. Um, like last time we were talking about committees and stuff, we have a lot of special interest groups that kind of serve as kind of the same thing. So you can see that how JOLT kind of assembles our special interest groups and you can also get there through our website. Um, I think that's everything. Um, any other final words, Laxman, do you want to uh, finish with? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Wayne. Thank you, Anne. And thank you all the participants here. And thank you, Zalt, um, as, as a community of practice for having me there. Thank you so much. Um, uh, so we would, 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 would love to have um, you know, more interactions with you in the future. Thank you so much.